All right, so gonna do something a little different here with this video. Um, as many of you might know that follow my YouTube channel, I'm a huge fan of the Cherokee. I've owned upwards of 60, I think this is 66, 65, somewhere around there. And I've made a lot of friends throughout the years, um, you know, restoring, collecting, and um, everything with these Cherokees. And um, I get a lot of people that reach out to me on the Facebook groups. Hey, I'm looking for one. Can you find me one? Or what is, you know, the, the main question I get is, hey, I just got into Cherokees. I see that you have a lot of them or have had a lot of them. What can you do to these to make them more reliable and you know daily driver worthy um i wouldn't say that they're not reliable at all but we have to remember that these are now 30 25 30 years old this style anyway so with that being said i figured a good youtube video would uh cover that and maybe be useful for a ton of people that are getting into these or had them or you know i wish i would have started this youtube channel you know 10 years ago 15 years ago because this is the last two years is just a little teeny tiny bit of, you know, my, my car enthusiast journey. So, um, a lot of people know Jeep Cherokee and line six, super reliable. But as I just said, they're, they're getting old. So there's certain things when I get a Jeep that I immediately start to baseline and go through to bulletproof this thing or these jeeps so um this one i've had about a month i've put 1500 miles on it daily drove it to work highway commute city commute mixed and uh with this one it's a kind of a longer story but i'm not going to get into it it needed some love 103,000 miles on it um but the the number one thing with these old cherokees that will leave you stranded absolutely the number one thing is the cooling system out of all the jeeps i've had i'd say 80 percent of the time i am doing work on the cooling system almost immediately after purchasing it and sure enough with this one wasn't getting up to temp right down here it's hard to see with the fan shroud but that's a telltale sign that your radiator's leaking so that's what happened with this one cooling system had to go through that Did, if you're gonna do something on the cooling system it doesn't matter if it's a thermostat redo the whole cooling system radiator hoses thermostat you know everything water pump what crucial is the water pump um and use gates or you know try to use some company that is reputable um because the water pumps are just, I mean, the, there was times where I had five Jeeps and two of them, the water pumps blew out the same day. So that's number one, cooling system. Um, delete that heater control valve, get that out of there. It doesn't need to be there. It, it, it doesn't affect the AC in the summer. It doesn't affect anything. Jeep actually got rid of that in 1997 completely. It was no longer in their four liter engines. So get rid of that heater control valve, go through your cooling system, make sure everything's good, squeeze your hoses, make sure that spring is in that lower water or uh, radiator hose. That's crucial that your, your radiator hose doesn't collapse on you and cause overheating. So make sure that spring's in there. Make sure your electric fan is working. Um, how you can di diagnose it not working is to pull this while the engine is running. This is your engine coolant temp sensor. And when you pull that, your e fan's going to come on. Your check engine light will come on, but it will it'll go away next startup. So that's a good way to diagnose that. These cooling systems are super small for this engine. So um, when you're idling, it's not uncommon to go over 210. This engine needs to be running at 210. Do not put a lower temp thermostat, 195 only. Don't listen to other people put a 180 or whatever in it. It doesn't need that. You make sure your electrical fan's working and your cooling system's upgraded or updated rather, um, you'll be just fine. With that, that fan kicks on, I think at 220 degrees, it'll bring it right down and it might cycle. If you're idling, it might cycle, you know, until you, you hit the gas and start driving and circulating um, the coolant. 
So that is absolutely number one that will leave you completely stranded. Number two is sensor issues. Crankshaft sensor is absolutely the second thing that will leave you stranded. Um, and that's way up here on the bell housing. You can kind of get a good look at it from the bottom, but I'm not getting under there. Um, so some are different, believe it or not. This one is a, I think this was purchased California. So it did not have the high altitude package, um, which has a more rounded sensor plug-in. Um, so yeah, if you're getting a new crankshaft sensor, just make sure that it, it's that right plug-in because the high altitude package has a different crank sensor on it. And uh, I believe that was the whole whole life of the four liter from um, 87 to 01, I believe. So that that is definitely number two, crankshaft sensor. If you ever get stranded, Dex Jeeps, shout out. Um, you can take a water bottle and spray water on that crankshaft sensor and it will work. I, I've done it works perfect but it, it you have to do it every time so if you get stranded crankshaft sensor um spray that thing down with some water it'll uh, get you back home so i guess the next thing would be the fuel systems or fuel system um you want to hook up to this schrader valve make sure that you got proper pressure the years are different i know for the older ones up to 95 i think it's 33 psi um, and that's, that's when it's running. doesn't matter if you're accelerating, idling, whatever, it should maintain 33. And a lot of people get a misconception that when the gauge is fluttering, that that's a bad sign. It's not, um, most likely that's just, just a little bit of air in that gauge. Um, fuel filter, you got to get those replaced. Those are down here under the wheel there. It's just a little clamp style that you, uh, flip over and make sure that you double clamp those fuel lines. Um, the only fires I've seen on these are from that spraying on the hot exhaust coming loose because they're not double clamped and people letting a valve cover gasket go way too long and you got your exhaust manifold right there. Another common thing, um, this was back early with the 2001s, mice were building nests on these. And uh, my sister's friends had a brand new Jeep Cherokee. I believe it was a 2000 or 2001. And a mouse built a nest on there and the engine caught on fire. And it happened so much that Jeep actually started designing a little insulating sleeve um, or uh, kind of like an insulating blanket that laid over the intake manifold and blocked that area. But that, that, that's the huge, the huge thing with the fuel, fuel system is the fuel filter, checking your PSI range. Uh, Bosch still does offer a fuel pump for these, believe it or not. Napa, I believe, carries them. So make sure your fuel pump is a is a good one. Don't don't go get a precision unit from advanced auto parts. Um, so yeah, we covered fuel system. If you want, you can go in do new injectors. Um, I'd recommend K suspension. Uh, also, here's a little tip. When you're doing these injectors, there's these little pieces here and a lot of techs even that have been doing this for years, they'll break these clips. So what I do is I use a dental pick on both sides to pinch that and pop it out. Um, I've had these pigtails go bad. So if you are looking into your fuel system, you can order new pigtails on case suspension and, and solder. I solder those in. Um, you know, and that's a good way to baseline the fuel system. I mean, pretty much fuel pump, injectors, a filter, that's baselining your uh, fuel system. But yeah, case suspension, I've used their four, four hole injectors for years. They're awesome. Okay, so the next big, big, big thing is grounds. A lot of people forget about that. There is a bunch of grounds on here. Um, I believe there's the oil dipstick. Yeah, right here. See all those wires? That's actually on the oil dipstick bracket under the engine block. There's a bunch of grounds right there. Of course, you have your typical grounds, you know, here. You have a ground up here on the engine block and you have a ground over there. 
um, it's crucial that you keep those clean. And this was a bigger problem for the Renex era Cherokees. Um, but that ground right there, I believe is a majority of your sensors on your throttle body, ignition components. I mean, if you have a, if you have a dirty ground or, you know, a bad ground, it's probably right there. Most likely. Um, so that's an electric type of base lining and rely, but that it all comes back to reliability. If your grounds aren't functioning right, you're not getting the right amps to your sensors, all of that. Um, the, the other big, big thing is rodent control. <laughs> and I would have said this anyway, even if this Jeep didn't have rodents. Um, almost every Cherokee I've had has some type of rodents in it. I don't know why. Fortunately, this isn't like my Lexus or a Toyota that have the Zoe based wiring. I don't know why they ever did that. But they'll get in there. They'll chew. I actually uh, repaired a chew mark there. I just did a valve cover gasket on this one. So I was able to vacuum out all of that. Uh, the mouse droppings that were, you know, by the valve cover. But that right there was the only thing they did. Um, so rodent control is huge because they will destroy wiring harnesses. They'll destroy wiring under your car. You know, uh, super hard to diagnose when, you know, they're chewing wires on the undercarriage or in the engine. I mean, it, that's run me for a loop a couple times now. Um, so what I do, don't leave any food in the car. Don't leave wrappers, food. The mice normally will not stick around if there's not something for them to eat. So that's what I do. And then another thing I do is I get peppermint oil, concentrate, mix it with hot water, and I spray the whole engine down all around there undercarriage you can do it it's just gonna it's just gonna go away but if they smell that chances are they'll go somewhere else but that is a huge thing with these to make them under more unreliable is rodents you just you don't want a mouse chewing your wire and having it finally die on you when you're way up in the mountains you know camping or something so that's the main things with these super easy to get them baseline of course those are just what i've seen over the years you know you want to go in and get your ignition components sorted um you know plugs wires you know cap rotor clean the throttle body is another thing get in there and clean that throttle body it's super easy four 10 millimeter bolts use a dental pick to pop these out you don't want to break those it'll be a bad day um there's a gasket under there just be careful of that as well but that is another huge thing that will uh make this thing run better i mean it's all about making it run good for a long long time um valve cover gasket another thing you should do immediately um i do those probably 60% of the Cherokees I've had through a valve cover. I just did one on this one. And it's super easy. I mean, you're just popping that front hose off. You know, everything is so simple to work on these. And if you're having issues, this is another trick I learned a long, long time ago on the Cherokee forum. If you're having issues with oil um, coming out of your breathers here, when you're doing your valve cover gasket, turn that valve cover upside down and there's a metal protruded piece in there that goes down probably i don't know two and a half inches cross drill through that with like a half inch drill bit reassemble it and you will no longer have oil coming out of your breather um i don't see that a lot that's more of a renex era which i do not um have have had many of maybe six renex cherokees um trying to think here so corrosion is another thing if you're trying to make this thing a daily driver and want to hang on to it forever get under there and get some fluid film on there do not use rubberized coatings i don't care how clean the jeep is this jeep is from california super clean unibody but i will eventually get around to putting fluid film on this 
Colorado, we don't have rust. I mean, we do, but it's not car killing rust. So I'll get under there and fluid film it and just make sure that everything's coated. Try to slow any corrosion down. That's what fluid film will do. It needs to be applied annually. It will wash off. So that is pretty much my bulletproofing on Jeep Cherokees that I get. Cooling system. I mean, it's the same stuff. Cooling system, fuel system. Um, it's the same stuff. And what I'm seeing more and more of is fuel system issues. And what that comes down to is the majority of the Jeeps that I get have sat a long time. And um, I didn't start seeing this till like the last seven, eight years when ethanol fuels are standard and pretty popular in most areas. And somebody fills that tank up, ethanol fuel, and it sits for even a year. That fuel system is going to be just gunked up. So keep that in mind if you're going to store these or even daily drive them. I don't put junk gas in these. I run 87 or premium. Um, and I'm always putting octane booster. Well, not octane booster, but a fuel system cleaner um, to help push through all that junk that got ran in it for years, you know. Um, so, yeah, if you're storing it, if you're using ethanol fuel, put some type of treatment in the tank. Because I don't want to buy that Jeep from you and have to do a gas tank drop but yeah that's that's it mechanically of course you got your shocks you got your sway bar end links i'm always doing sway bar end links if you want to firm that ride up make it ride a little nicer sway bar end links in the frame mount bushings super simple make sure to spray a little bit of wd-40 up in that frame rail soak those bolts same thing with the shocks especially the rears if you're planning on doing shocks, they're super easy to do. But if you're planning on doing that, soak those bolts for a couple days, maybe a week. It goes with the exhaust manifold. I've done a lot of those. This one, 103,000 miles. It's already cracked. Not terrible, but it's there. Um, anytime I'm doing those, I will soak those bolts down for at least a week. Just watch out for it catching fire. Got to be careful. Um... So we talked about quite a bit, pretty much everything that I would do or do do. Um, one major thing, those gas shocks back here, just constantly go bad. It's another thing I do a lot of when I get these. Brake master cylinders, do a lot of those. If you're ever looking at a Jeep and on the driver's side, that lower portion, you're seeing the actual factory paint wearing off so if you go down here and you look up there right in this area on that unibody rail and where the control arm meets if you see bubbling of that paint whether it's undercoating or the factory paint looks chemically burnt it's going to need a new brake booster or master cylinder rather um i've probably done I don't know, 10, 10 of those. And I believe this one's ABS, yeah. But that doesn't change the master cylinder there. Replacing it anyway. Um, yeah, that's it for mechanics. Want to check your bulbs, you know, go around, make sure everything works. Last thing you want is to get pulled over. Maybe you had a couple drinks in your trying to get lucky and head home late at night and got to make sure those bulbs work. I used to drink and drive a lot when I lived in Michigan and I would always go around my car, make sure I didn't have a bulb out. So yeah, we talked about everything on my list here. So I guess I can put that away. And then we'll go to the interior. So say you uh, you got this thing mechanically looking really nice, feeling nice. You know, let's say you went even and did your motor mounts. That's another thing. Motor mounts go. I think this one needs motor mounts. It's not terrible, but how you can tell is when you first start it, 
that vibration when the starter and the engines initially starting sometimes it's really rough and other times it's smooth that's how you can tell your motor mounts are going bad and also on a low mileage one for the exhaust manifold to be cracked or starting to crack it's a good indication too so that's another thing motor mounts trans mounts another thing this is huge not really a reliability factor but that clamp under there always breaks you can see i actually have some wire holding that up temporarily just to uh keep that from rattling around it does need a new muffler catalytic converter i can hear it rattling internally so yeah if you want to get into more of the restoration that was covering bulletproofing getting it baseline for daily driving that is literally if you do those things that i said you will have a very 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 reliable cherokee um very reliable one other thing this is this is a main thing for me that i'm always doing these trans lines as you can see that one is leaking I need to get on that. Um, so you can either take a mini, like a micro pipe cutter and cut that rubber out and splice in new rubber. That's what I usually do. Of course, double clamp that. That usually works. But yes, new sway bar end links. Doesn't look like it's leaking anything besides that transmission line. But yeah, that's another major thing is those transmission lines always leak. So if you want to get in, like I was saying before I got distracted again, if you want to get into like restoring and preserving on the interior, I always shampoo these. I wouldn't really call it shampooing. I'd call it a good soak. And I'm a cheap, very, very cheap person. Um, yeah, I spend money on vehicles and that's really about it. Um, but what I do is I go to AutoZone for this vehicle. It took probably three of those cans with the little brushes on top for interior car detailing it's like i got a scrubber on the top it's like a foam cleaner what i do is i take a warm spray bottle fill it up with a tad of dawn dish soap just a little bit and i spray the seat down whole seat i do the seat by seat i don't go forward at all till the end Spray that down, let that soak in, that Dawn dish soap and that warm water. And then I spray down the seat with that automotive cleaner. These seats were disgusting. And you can see, I made them look pretty good. So you, you spray that down with your automotive upholstery cleaner. After you sprayed it down with warm water, you let it sit. And with these particular seats, you do not want to use a crazy brush. Like... Literally, you're better off using your hand or like a microfiber towel. And then you want to get a vacuum, shop vac. Make sure to take your filter out. Don't run it with the filter in the bag. Take those out. Dump out any trash, you, you know, you got in your vacuum and vacuum that out. And just vacuum, vacuum, suck all that moisture out and then do it again. And for 25 bucks, you're really doing the same thing as a, you know interior detail person would do relatively it's it's giving you the same results is my point yeah these were there's coffee just running down the side there so yeah that's pretty much a baseline punch list if you own a jeep cherokee and furthermore some good advice i've only owned maybe two or three 97 plus Cherokees. And why I don't and why I haven't owned one for a really long time is when I first got, uh, I think it was a 99 or a 2000 Cherokee. I had friends that worked at the Jeep dealership and this was back in 2005, 2006. The amount of issues that the 97 plus Cherokee had compared to these older ones is, is pretty crazy electrical issues the heads cracking on the 2000 and 01s i mean it, it was a lot of electrical stuff right off the bat so if you're looking for something that 
is more reliable. I'm not saying that the 97 plus isn't reliable because it is, but from, from my opinion and my perspective and what I've dealt with for the last 20 years with these Jeep Cherokees is 96, sorry, 91 to 96, 95, 96 in particular is the year you want to go with. OBD2, you can plug in, you know, any type of scanner, get live data. 96 has a couple things redesigned in the engine, make it smoother. I think it's got more bracing on the bottom portion by the bearings. Um, you know, you get the updated stuff. You know, you could always get the chrome package. One thing I love about 95, 96 is the seats are bigger. I'm a big guy. I'm, I'm 260, 270. Probably more than that. I haven't weighed myself in a while. That that extra little bit on each side, I mean, it's not much, but the 95, 96 seats are way more comfortable. So if you're looking <clears throat> for the best year, in my opinion, 95, 96. And you're in luck because they made the most Cherokees ever in one year in 96. And it was over a quarter million Jeep Cherokees in 1996. So yeah, that's it. Make sure first thing you do when you get your Cherokee, go over that cooling system, go through your ignition components, get a spare crankshaft sensor, carry a bottle of water with you, with you if you, you know, are scared of being stranded. Check your fuel system, fuel pressure. You could take your injectors out and clean them. Do that ultrasonic cleaning. Make sure you're not leaving trash in there for rodents to eat. Get your suspension repaired. Any issues with that? Shocks, struts, leaf springs are always going to be an issue. I usually let those ride for a long time, even if they need repaired. It's not going to affect anything with reliability, though. We're only talking about what I do or what you should do to make these things more reliable for an everyday driver. So that's it. I went over everything that I do to these old Jeeps to make them daily drivable and reliable and bulletproof. And I will say very happily that I have never been stranded out of the 60 some Jeeps I've owned. I have never been stranded. That's pretty crazy to say. Yeah, that's it. How to bulletproof baseline your old Jeep Cherokee.